Hi friends, this is Anna here today, and today my mannequin and I are both wearing a Marika wrap dress. It's one of my favorite patterns by Ellie and Mac, um, and I thought it couldn't get any better, but I saw Lakeisha make a version with a ruffle across the front, and I fell in love because I love the romantic aspect of these ruffles that go around the front, and I think they make such a perfect spring touch. So, I thought, why don't I go ahead and make another version of this, because I can never have enough of this pattern, and add some ruffles to it. I'm gonna show you how I plan to do it. I'm crossing my fingers, it turns out. I'm super excited about it, so let's get started. <laughs> Let's think this through. I've got these things I have to cut no matter what. My short strap, my long strap. I'm going to leave that over there. I've got to cut my back no matter what. Again, I'm not doing anything to the back, but I'm going to leave it because I'm going to have to measure my neck area to see how long I'm going to cut my ruffle. I'm doing short sleeves because I want this to be like more of a spring wrap. So I'm going to put those away. Um, I'm going to grab my front. Here's my front area. I'm gonna cut two mirrored. And this right here is the bottom of the front. This is the bottom of the back. I have to add length because I'm 5'7", so that's why mine is cut into two pieces. So I have to take that into consideration when I'm going to cut the bottom. I'm doing the knee, above the knee, but you could grab like the mid thigh and cut there. But like I said, I want it to be like about five inches here so i could go ahead and redo this reprint this piece right here or grab um what do you call it grab some other type of paper and trace it on so i'm gonna go ahead and do that real quickly um, and just trace it on another piece of paper so i don't mess up this um, one piece of pattern and i'm gonna make myself a new pattern piece yo I'm not even going to show you. I just traced this out and I tried to draw a picture of what I was trying to do and it looks so dumb. So I'm hiding it from you so you can't see it. But basically my bodice goes like this, right? Because um, this is my wrap top. It goes something like this, right? That's kind of what it looks like here. Um, the front goes all the way down like so. And then, you know, here comes my dress. This is the bottom of the dress, right? And I don't want this uh, ruffle because I'm going to have a ruffle around the back who's going to go like right here and right here, all the way around the front. And, you know, it's going to come around the neck, the back of the neck, you know, but I mean, obviously you can't see the neck back here, but the neck is going to be back there. Anyway, so this is all ruffle here, all the way down the front. I want to go a little bit far in, uh, so at the end here, it's kind of coming in here. I am not a designer, and I don't know how to draw all these things, so I hope this is making sense to you. So I'm going from the shoulder, not all the way out to the shoulder, just kind of like right around here. And I'm going to measure that. It's probably going to be about four inches from the shoulder all the way down, and then it's going to come here at the front. It's going to start narrowing down so it can get smaller here at the end. But again, here, I don't want it to go all the way down and give me bulk from the inside because this is the part that's going to go tucked in. So I'm going to start at the same width here on the shoulder and then I'm going to come in so that by the time it gets here, it's just inside on the inside part of that. It's just a little piece. So it closes in. So that point right here where I'm going to want to stop, which is like a, probably about an inch or so inside the bodice is this right here because this is where it starts turning i'm going to use this line right here and i'm going to mark and that's going to be where i want it this ruffle to stop so that i don't have all that bulk underneath it so that's just how i'm going to do it which means i want to start measuring from this point go all the way to the top of the shoulder go around the neckline on the back so i know exactly how much to add in the back and then i'm going to go all the way down to the front of the bodice which will be right here at the end of the front and that's how I'm going to do my front ruffle. Front, okay? So, uh, I mean top. Front, top, because this is the top bodice, okay? Um, I'm going to measure out how long I want the ruffle to be, and that's up to you how long you want that ruffle to be. I think about, I said about four inches, 
uh, four inches out would be like right here. Um, and I think that that's a good, yeah, that was like four and a half where I marked it. So I think that that would be a good shape to have four inches. And then it's going to obviously narrow down here. I'll probably go down to three inches and then two inches and come all the way in. So it's like, but I'll draw that on the one side. Let me finish drawing it out. All right, so here's the front of my dress. So like I said, this is where I'm stopping here. Now for the front edge, and I know I have this corner here that got kind of cut off. I can just like tape a piece of paper here to add that um, area. So I'll add that real quick. So now for the front, this is where the gather is gonna go. I'm not gonna do it around the back. I'm only doing it on the front. So that's why I'm only showing you the front of the bodice. I want the ruffle to be about four inches or I guess we'll do like five inches here. So I'm going to mark that here in that front corner. Here's my four inches because I want this to be, I'm gonna shorten the dress so that the ruffle is the length of the dress. So I might do it. Yeah, I think four inches is gonna be good. If you want it to be longer than four inches, wider, whatever, you can definitely do that. I'm just, just doing four inches because that's just what I'm thinking I'm going to want. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way around, measuring my four inches. And again, as it's coming up here, I'm gonna make it a little bit slimmer. So I'm gonna go down to three inches, then I'm gonna go down to two inches, and then I'm gonna go down up here to one inch. So then it's coming here to the corner. And I want it to be kind of even so it comes in there because I'm gonna tuck it in. So I want like a little bit of seam allowance, like a half an inch from the edge, but that's about it. So it looks like right here is how it's gonna go. Okay, so here's an edge ruler, kind of. Um, so since I want to curve it, I want it to curve here. This is kind of going to help me. I'm going to keep this like how I have the straight measurement so that it kind of goes, stays straight somewhat, right? and then finish it up all the way down. So this is gonna be what my ruffle is gonna be. And then here at the edge, I'm gonna attach that to the uh, bottom because the back is gonna be the same length. Now, is that gonna look weird if the ruffle meets the back and there's no ruffle in the back? Like, is there usually a ruffle in the back as well? I may have to do the same for the back and do a ruffle at least along the back edge. Oh, I don't know what to do. Hmm. All right, y'all. I realized that I do want it to be on the back as well because I want it to kind of all blend in seamlessly. When you put the dresses together, you don't want like a ruffle in the front and then it's like straight back. So I'm gonna do ruffle in the front and going all the way to the back, um, which means that I'm going to have to kind of curve it up a little bit at the end. Um, this is the side seam, and I think it'll be fine if it just ends, butts up into the bottom of the, the side of the other one like that. So it'll just continue, and this is gonna be, this will be my front here. Um, so it'll have the ruffle here all the way up, and then I might go in the ruffle, like kind of in a peak right here, like I did on one side. So I'm gonna have to add all those together. Um, so I'm going to have to add, yeah, I'll show you. So I've got this one long front. So this piece is gonna be my front right here, right? So I'll have to have this and I'm going to, what I'm going to do and end up doing is slashing and spreading. So it ends up being like, I don't know, four times the width because that's what I want. I want it to be this long, 
um, but I want it, no, not four times, I'm sorry, one and a half the width because I want it to uh, kind of flow. I don't want it to be just one strip. So I'm going to lengthen this so it'd be like longer starting at the four so i'm just going to add inches here you know like the four inches this is just a this is just going to end up being one long stri strip that will just eventually come in right here to go bloop. okay so it's going to be four inches this way and then plus this times two because the back is folded in two um cut in two so that's uh this two times plus the front and the overlapping front that will come over it's going to be like for this length here and then go whoop, close in like this it's gonna close right here because i don't want the bulk on my front to be tucked under um let me show you a video um of myself so you can see what i'm talking about all right i wanted to show you what i'm talking about the front i already showed you is going to go starting at the side this is the front panel all the way around the neck so i'll have to measure from this point all the way around to the shoulder. Then I'll have to measure the back, all, cause it's going all the way around. And then I'm gonna come down to this point right here where my bust um, goes right here, which is the point that I showed you when I was uh, cutting the pattern piece earlier. And so I'm gonna go all the way around. And when it comes to here, I'm gonna go down to one inch. And then if it comes to here, I'm also going to go down to one inch. So the ruffle will s slightly slim out as it goes down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and measure all the way around and then I'm going to in the middle cut it up and elongate it so whatever it is that the measurement is all the way around I'm going to times that by one and a half so then I have like a like a light ruffle. Now if you want it to be more gathered than what I have then you can times it times two but that's up to you. So where the four inch place is I'm just going to split and go bloop add whatever inches I need to add to be one and a half the width because then I'm going to gather and attach it on. So that's for the top. Now for the bottom, I'm going to have to add a couple things. I'm going to start here and I have this piece that I'm cutting out that goes to the front, right? So I'm going to have from here, I'm going to go all the way down. It gets gross to four inches here. So I'm going to go all the way down to this corner. Then the back. Now the back is cut in two. So as you can see, here's one and it stops in the middle and here's another one. So you have to add both of them and come all the way here to the corner. And then I'm coming all the way around the front and I'm going to stop like somewhere around here, about a couple inches, two or three inches up from the turn, right? Um, actually, you know what? I may just stop like, so this is going to be ruffle. I may just stop like right before it starts to curve, stop like right before it starts to curve because then it'll just like stop right there. That way I don't have all this bulk coming up the side. No, you know what? Because it's going to be... Yeah, I'll just stop here at the side. And if it doesn't work out, you can watch me do it and fail. And then you're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to stop lower. So I'm going to go like right, right after the curve. So that's all the measurement I need to take. From that edge, all the way around the bottom, all the way around the whole thing, all the way up to the waist. So that's what I'm going to do. The reason why I marked it on my pattern is because I want to cut my pattern shorter so that it's the same, essentially going to end up being the same length that it is now, but it's gonna have the ruffle. Now, if you want it to be longer, then you still wanna cut here because I want it, you know, you want the ruffle to be like right here, but then you would just let it go down a lower at the front. You can do that, right? So, I hope that makes sense. Now, once I cut that strip, it's also going to be four inches at the widest part. Chop it there and spread it out however long you need to be one and a half the width of the whole thing going around. Um, I hope that makes sense. That's what I was trying to show you in the pattern, but I didn't want to confuse you. So I'm gonna now go ahead and cut that off. It really does not matter how, um, how you cut it because it really is just one long strip that is four inches wide at the, long, at the widest. And then at both ends, it's gonna come up to one inch on one end, up to one inch on the other end. And same for the neckline. Start, doesn't matter where, uh, like how it starts, you don't even need a pattern for that. You're gonna cut one strip the width 
uh, the length that you measured and then at the end it's gonna go down to one inch and to one inch and one of the ends will start here and the other ends will end here one of the bottom ends will start here and the other end will go around and stop here okay so I hope that makes sense it looks more complicated because I am changing the shape of the pattern because I wanted to fit a certain way but for the ruffle itself you're just making like one long four inch strip, five inch strip, however long you want the ruffle to be. And if you want the ruffle to be really long and wavy, then you can add a 10 inch ruffle or whatever. Um, and if you just don't, if you don't care if the ruffle starts here on the side, then you don't even have to mess with the pattern pieces. You can just attach it right to the edge here and it still will look adorable. So I'm gonna go cut out my pattern. I'm going to go cut out my ruffle, measure my pattern, cut out my ruffle, and then we'll come back. I'm gonna sew it up and then we'll come back. Uh, I'll stop at the step where I won't do the straps and I won't hem because that's the step where I'll have to add the ruffle. So all I'm gonna go do is I'm going to cut out the ruffle. Again, I'm going to measure all the way around on my pattern pieces. I'm going to cut out the ruffle. At the, uh, at the middle of the ruffle, I'm gonna extend it to add the um, a half more of the width, the length it's gonna be. I keep messing those two up, but you know what I mean. And then uh, I'm gonna go cut it out and cut the pattern piece. Then I'm gonna sew my pattern piece, my pattern pieces together up until the point where I have to hem the uh, all the outer edges because that's when I'm going to attach the ruffle. So I'll be back with that. I hope that was all making sense. If, you, if it's not making sense, please comment below and leave me a question. Come find us on Facebook or Instagram and I can help you there. Um, and I wanna answer all your questions because um, sometimes it's easier in my head, it's, I can see it, but I don't know if I'm being able to translate it correctly. So I hope it's making sense. <laughs>
in like so. Actually, I'll trim that when I when I go attach it because I want to make sure it's nice and even. Uh, but at the top, I'm going to put in a basting stitch to gather it. Uh, so that way it's already gathered when I go to attach it. So I'm going to go sew it. I have my two ends here. I'm going to put in a basting stitch, gathering stitch at the top of both of the ruffles. So then I can just rough, uh, gather to fit. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my front bodice and mark the side where I'm going to stop at. So the overlap is going to stop like right here. I'm going to mark that where I marked it on my bodice already. And I have my front. Here's my one side that comes over and here's my other. Now remember, we're going to add the strap here because this is where your gap is. That means that one's the ones that are gonna go, that's the one that's gonna go underneath. That's the one that you're gonna mark, you're gonna stop at, you're not gonna go all the way down, right? So make sure that you mark that because now we're going to grab the first one. This is the one that's gonna go in the front and we're gonna find the back of it. Fold it in half and find the half. And you can actually like quarter it if you want to. I'm not gonna quarter it, I'm just gonna go from there, but you can, here's the back. And then I'm going to go, and actually it'd probably be better not to find your back, it'd probably be better to measure it all around and kind of quarter it according to the measurements. But what I'm going to do is, I'm doing going the wrong way. I'm going to match right side, wrong side of the bodice to the right side of the ruffle because I'm going to attach it to the wrong side of the bodice, the right side of the ruffle to the wrong side of the bodice. So I can then once it's attached, I'm going to flip it out. So it kind of hangs out, but I got to gather it so it will fit. It's bigger than my bodice is now than my, uh, neckline is now so I want to gather it so it's going to fit so I'm just pulling on the basting stitch that I added and then I'm going to go here where this point is where I'm supposed to stop and I'm going to attach that there and remember how I said I was going to make that thinner I will do that at the end because I can cut it later now you can you have to do it now if you're hemming you would do it before you hem it obviously but I I'm not hemming, so I'm fine. I'm gonna open up, this is my neckline. This is where it stops at here, and then this is where my neckline goes all the way down here to the other side. But I'm just opening it because it'll be easier for me to attach once it's open. I'm gonna move it over just a tiny bit right here where I have this mark, because like I said, on one side is shorter, so I wanna account for that. And I'm just going to attach it the right side of the ruffle, I know it's kind of hard to see what the right and wrong side is with this fabric, but I'm attaching the right side of the ruffle to the wrong side of the neckline. I will tell you that I did end up with a little bit more than one and a half times the length uh, for the ruffle. I measured all the way around and I accounted for one and a half and then I had a little bit extra so I just went ahead and left it on there because um, a little bit extra gather will be fine. So um, mine is a little gathered a little bit more than one and a half. So if yours seems like it doesn't have as many gathers as mine then um, if you do one and, a, one and a half it's because mine is probably like 175 instead of one and a half. All right, I'm going to go attach this. This is the bodice ruffle, and then we'll do the bottom bodice ruffle after. Let's go attach to this. All right, as you can see, they have been attached to the neckline. So this is the right side of the neckline, and here it is attached. Now, you can just leave it. And, you know, I don't know if this will kind of move down on you and kind of try to come out, 
or you can go ahead and grab where the seam is and do a top stitch to the actual bodice. So I would fold the seam allowance towards the bodice and top stitch it down to do a, um, an under stitching. So it will keep it nice and stiff there. And maybe I'll come back and do that in a little bit, but I wanna try it on first and make sure everything looks good once I've attached the next ruffle. But let me show you how this is looking right now. Um, the ruffle, obviously, it's going to come to the front like this. And here is the other side that comes all the way to the waist. And you've got this beautiful ruffle that's coming all the way across the neckline. Again, see how that's kind of exposed? You can, once we top stitch that, um, then the fabric should stay. But look at how pretty that's going to be. That is going to be so romantic, so adorable. And see right here kind of comes in a little bit here, the ruffle. So it kind of ends in this little like in. And then we're going to come back over this way. Now for the ruffle for the bottom, all the way around the bottom, that's going to start obviously right here. Take right off from where it ended and go all the way around. And you're going to want to mark, uh, mine is going to end like right after the curve here on the other side. So that's where I'm going to mark. And if you wanna like half your fabric and everything and like be really precise on how how spread out the ruffle is gonna be, you can do that. I'm probably just gonna go ahead and start like somewhere around in between the back. Um, I'm not very good at, I'm not very patient. Anyway, but what we're doing with this one, so the other one we attached to the wrong side of the bodice. This one we're attaching right sides together. So we're attaching right sides together because it's going to then flip out towards the bottom. So because this one's going to be going a different way. Um, so we're going to start here where I left off with my ruffle. And I'm going to go with right sides together on this side. that and we'll see how it's turning out. All right, now that everything has been attached, my next step is going to be to understitch the neckline. And I have, I like put some pins because I tried it on. And I will say that I kind of feel a little bit like this might be a lot of ruffle to have in the front bodice. But I'm going to go ahead and understitch it and let you decide and let me know what you think in the comments below. If you think, um, what you think about if I should have done less or whatever. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do for understitching. This is the right side of the fabric here. This is the front of my dress. And this is where the ruffle meets right here. I'm going to top stitch it to the bodice. So that way when I turn it, it's top stitched. So this, this uh, facing, uh, you know, the, the inside of the, the dress won't poke out like that. It will stay hopefully nice and flat. Now, another thing that will help the ruffles too is if you wanted to, as you're top stitching, put in some clear elastic here to hold that and keep it stable. You can do that as well. And when I do my real, um, when I do my other one, um, I probably will add some clear elastic here at the neckline because I don't want so much bulk. And then you also let me know, well, let's do this and then we'll talk about it. Ah. Make sure you're catching, you're not catching the wrong piece of fabric like I just did. Or you, like me, will end up having to see it. All right, friends, we are done. It's been understitched, it's been hem, and we are all finished. What do you all think? I think it turned out really good. Um, the only thing, like I said earlier, I'm kind of 
wondering, did I put too many ruffles here at the front? You comment below and let me know what you think. I will be making another version of this dress. So I want to know your, um, I want to know your thoughts um on the ruffle is it too much should i gone less is it too short should i've gone longer or is it just perfect comment below and let me know and i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and what i really really what i really would like you to take out of this tutorial is to go ahead and try different things with your patterns uh change them up mash them up uh trying different things with your patterns it's a little bit scary sometimes but it really isn't once you get down to it and if you make mistakes that's how we learn that's okay we pick back up we keep going we do better the next time and we have already learned all the lessons that making that mistake taught us so I hope you get out there and just get 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 on with it and and change all the patterns <laughs> I hope you have a great rest of your day and if you haven't already please subscribe to our channel we'd love to have you I hope you uh, go get your pattern and sew it up with me see you next time bye